Yeah. Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, yeah. present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One King! One! You huskies. Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as to meet the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Try this first thing tomorrow. Treat yourself to the breakfast cereal shot from guns. That's the one and only... Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Just pour out a bowl full, crisp and fresh, right from the big red and blue package. Add milk or cream, top with your favorite fruit, and dive in. See if you ever tasted anything so swell as these giant king size kernels of premium wheat or rice shot from guns. Yes, tomorrow morning, <laughs> enjoy this breakfast treat Quaker puffed rice. Or Quaker Pup Wheat. It was late in the afternoon when Sergeant Preston and his famous dog, Yukon King, approached the small mill town of Caribou, where their friend and fellow Mountie, Constable Bill Warren, lived with his wife, Bess. As they entered the village... King suddenly bristled and growled as he crowded close to Sergeant Preston. What's the matter, King? Then the Mountie saw a giant husky approaching slowly, deliberately, with fangs bared for... Ready, King. Stand your ground. Hey, you guys, look. There's going to be a fight. King was poised and ready. Sergeant Preston stepped aside to give him room to meet the other dog. Then the strange dog charged. Instead of meeting the rush, King dodged aside. The enemy flashed past him, then turned and charged again. Once more, King leaped aside. Time after time, the strange dog tried to close in, but King refused to come to grips. He leaped and dodged and sidestepped to avoid the reaching fangs, and all the while he drew back farther from the crowd. Then, King, the champion of the Yukon, turned and ran. He raced away with a giant husky in pursuit. King, come back here, boy. Looks like your dog turned yellow, huh, Sergeant? <laughs> <laughs> well, Preston, don't feel too bad about it. That big husky has already killed two dogs. That's right, he's a killer. King was not afraid. Oh, not much. <laughs> I reckon everybody meets his equal or his master sometime, even dog. <laughs> Sergeant Preston made no reply to the jibes that were being hurled at him from all sides. Better get another dog. He turned on his heels and started down the street toward the constable's office, where he knew he would find his friend, Bill Warren. As the crowd began to break up, a small man who had remained in the background turned and hurriedly made his way to a small cabin that stood apart from the other buildings on the street. A heavy set man looked up from a newspaper. Joe, what was all the yelling going on down the street? That mangy dog of yours was the cause of it. Spike? <laughs> What'd he do, kill another dog? Not yet. But Sam, he's got us into plenty of trouble. Trouble? How do you mean, Joe? He tried to pick a fight with a dog that belongs to a Monty named Preston. Sergeant Preston. His dog, King, huh? Yeah. When did Preston and King hit town? Uh, a few minutes ago. Spike went for King as soon as they arrived. The little man told about the incident as briefly as possible. Sam looked amused and then began to chuckle. <laughs> so Spike ran Yukon King out of town, huh? <laughs> I can't help but laugh. The way that Monty's bragged about his dog. <laughs> he just never run into Spike before. Sam, it's not funny. <laughs> it means we've got to get out of town and get out quick. Wait a minute, Joe. Don't get excited. That Monty's only on patrol. He don't know we were the ones who robbed the assay office in Whitehorse. How do you know he don't? Oh, how could he know? Now, if we just stay holed up here in this cabin till he moves on, maybe tomorrow, 
Well, we'll be safe. I'd agree with you, Sam, if it wasn't for that dog of yours. Well, what's Spike got to do with it? To begin with, Spike killed two dogs within an hour after we hit town yesterday. I paid off their owners. Paid plenty. The constable came down here and told you to keep Spike chained. I chained him. He must have busted loose. We can prove it if his collar snapped. I know, I know. But Sam Preston's not going to like it. Getting his dog chased out of town. Maybe killed. When the constable tells him about Spike killing them other two dogs, Preston's coming down here to talk to us. Yeah, I see what you mean. I don't want him getting a look at me. We've got to get out of town and now, right away. All right, Joe. We'll leave as soon as Spike gets by. Sam, this is a good chance to get rid of that dog. One of these days, he'll turn on us. Maybe kill one or both of us. Why don't you leave him? Joe, where I go, Spike goes. We've argued this out before. I don't want to hear any more about getting rid of Spike, you hear me? Okay, okay, you win. Spike goes. But let's get our packs ready to pull out when he shows up. Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston had arrived at the constable's office and told Bill Warren what had happened. The constable's anger flared. That settles it, Sergeant. I'm going down there and destroy that dog. He's a menace. Not so fast, Bill. But he may have killed King by this time. You haven't much faith in King's ability to take care of himself, have you, Bill? He turned tail and ran. He must have been afraid of that other dog. King was not afraid. Then why didn't he stand and fight? I can't answer that, Bill. But he had a reason. He'll soon show up. All I've got to say is I'm glad it's not one of my dogs. I'd not feel as good as you do about it. Well, do you know that big husky? You said he's a menace. Well, he hit town yesterday with a couple of fellas who holed up in a cabin down by the mill. Within an hour, the brute had killed two dogs. Oh, huh? he is bad. Why is he running loose? He shouldn't be. I told those men to put him on a chain or I'd have to destroy him. And they did chain him up. I checked on that late yesterday. And he must have broken loose. He's big enough and strong enough. So that's why I'm in favor of shooting him. I gave them warning. What? Hey. I told you King would show up. Hello there, fella. I was expecting you. Come on in. Tell us what happened. <laughs> doing his level best to tell you something. He sure is. The constable had you dead and buried, King. <laughs> oh, lay off, Sergeant. You'll have him disliking me. Now, let me take a look at you, boy. I want to see how badly beaten you are. But... <laughs> Why, there's not a hair out of place on him. That big husky never got near him. King, it was the first time you ever ran from a fight. Wonder why you did it. <laughs> Wish I could understand you, fella. I'm still in favor of going down there and shooting that husky. He's a killer. No, Bill, not yet. Give the owners another warning to keep him chained. Uh, all right. I don't see the sense of it. It's a matter of pride with me, Bill. Pride? Yes. If you destroyed that dog now, the whole town would say it was because I ordered you to do it. I don't care what they say. I do. Before I leave town, I'm going to find out why King ran from him. I don't see how you'll do it, Sergeant. How about putting King and me up at your house tonight? We haven't had a home-cooked meal in a month. Have we, King? <laughs> Bess and I'd be mad if you didn't stay with us. In fact, I, I told her a few days ago it was time for you and King to come through on patrol. She said to tell you not to stop at the tavern. But you've got guests. Uh, by the way, it's, it's almost supper time right now. Let's close shop and get home. All right, I have some routine police matters to go over with you, but we can do that after supper. Sure, sure, there's plenty of time for that. Let's go, King. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the little cabin at the edge of town, the owners of Spike made up their packs by the flickering light of a candle. They had just finished when there was a scratching on the door. There's Spike now. Let him in, Joe, while I get my pack on. Hey, what's the matter with him? What do you mean, Joe? Take a look at him. He's slobbering all over and growling. Yeah. Come here, Spike. Let me take a look at you. Did that dog chew you up? Hey, hey! Look at me, you! Look out! You're knocked over the table. Get him off! Shoot him! I can't see him! The candle's out! Get off! Let go of me! Run, Let's... Sam, run! Get out of here! Where is he, Joe? I slammed the door. He's inside the cabin. He's inside the cabin. Sam, he bit you. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I can't understand it. Spike never would have bit me before. I can't understand it. I can tell you why. They've got to get you to a doctor. You, you know why he jumped me? Sure. You saw him slobbering all over when he came in and his eyes were glazed. Crazy like. Yeah, I saw him. He never looked like that before. The dog's mad, Sam. Mad? You mean hydrophobia? Yeah. The rabies, they call it. Rabies? Hydrophobia? I'll die. I'll die, I tell you. Not if you get to a doctor in time. Say, 24 hours. Now, calm down, Sam. But we've got to get to a doctor now. I'm scared. Sam. Joe, we got to go. Sam, go. listen to me. 
Take it easy. Okay, okay, but Joe, there's no doctor in town. There's one in Pineville about 15 miles from here. He'll take care of you. You sure? I'm sure. I'll guarantee it. Okay, Joe, I'm depending on you. But Joe... Yeah? Why didn't you shoot Spike when he jumped me? You fool, you knocked over the table. Put out the candle. I might have shot you. Uh, yeah, we're both lucky I slammed the door and kept him inside. Now get out of my way while I open the door. No, don't let him out. Don't. I'm not. I'll just open the door a crack, and when Spike sticks his head up close, I'll shoot. No, no, don't do it, Joe. Are you crazy, Sam? If I don't kill him, he'll jump the first person who opens that door. And a shot will bring folks running down here. Maybe the Mounties. Uh, I didn't think of that. There's no one in the street. Everybody's inside eating supper now. It's starting to snow. It's a good time to get out of town. Let's hightail it to that doctor. Come on, Joe, move. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Say, here's a breakfast treat that can't be beat. I mean crisp, swell-tasting Quake Puff Rice or Quaker Puff Wheat. The crisp, tender, ready-to-serve cereals shot from guns. Hey there, what's going on? Let me in. Say, you all right? Need any help? Help? Why, no. But say, fella, where are you going in that coonskin cap and buckskin coat? And man alive, what are you doing with that musket? Must be six feet long. Son, I hear him shooting and I come running. Well, who are you? Name's Boone. Daniel Boone. Daniel Boone? The great pioneer hunter and woodsman? Name's Daniel. Gee, I'll bet you're mighty handy with that rifle you're carrying. I never heard any complaints. Well, look, Daniel, that shooting you heard now was just me explaining about the keenest tasting breakfast ever. Oh. That's rice or wheat shot from guns. Yeah, huh? Sure. Nowadays, we load huge guns with choice, sun-ripened, premium grains of rice or wheat. Oh. Then these guns are exploded. <laughs> Out come colossal, giant grains exploded up to eight times normal size. Well. They're magnified, glorified, well. crispified. Gee. That's why Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat are so good to eat. Well, I'll be horn swung. And for breakfast, lunch, or supper, all you do is pour out a bowl full right from the package... Add milk or cream, and top with your favorite fruit. Mm, that's for me. And what's more, Quaker ice and Quaker puffed wheat are nourishing. They're good for you. They furnish added health values of restored natural grade amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Say, look, son, where do I get me a couple of packages of this here rice and wheat shot from guns? Daniel, you get them at the nearest grocery store. And fellas and girls, here's a tip for you, too. Delicious Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat is never sold in bags or bulk. To get the original, crisp, fresh rice or wheat shot from guns, always look for the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. That's your guarantee that you're getting this famous breakfast treat. The one and only Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. And now to continue our story. When Sergeant Preston and his friends, the Warrens, had finished supper, the Mountie brought a sheaf of official papers from his pack and spread them on the living room table. Now to go over those routine matters I spoke of, Bill. Here are a couple of circulars that have been wanted by the department. Safe floors and dangerous. I see. I'll tack them up on the bulletin board tomorrow. Uh, Joe Dunn, Sam Fisher... Just a minute, Sergeant. What is it? I know these men. They're right here in town. You sure? Of course I am. They're the owners of the dog that jumped King this afternoon. Bill, that means you and I have a job to do. You bet it does, Sergeant. We'll kill two birds with one stone. Not only bring them in, but also that husky. That's right. Now I'll get our parkas. It's snowing out and getting colder by the second. I'll get a lantern. We may need it. <laughs> yes, King, you're going along. Come on, fellow. By the way, Sergeant. Yes, Bill. Here's your parka. Thanks. In view of what happened today, don't you think it might be best if King didn't go? No, Bill. King's going along. If he runs a second time, I'll be surprised. It took but a few minutes to cover the distance to the cabin at the edge of town. And the two officers saw that no light glowed through the windows. Looks as if nobody's home. No light inside. Perhaps we should have looked in at the tavern on the way here. They may be there. That's so. Well, they may have gone to bed early. That's possible. I'll knock on the door and see. What's the matter, fellow? Blocking your way. Don't be afraid, King. That dog's not in there. 
whistling and yet whining pleadingly, King placed himself squarely between Sergeant Preston and the door of the cabin. And when Constable Warren attempted to reach the door, King intercepted him. Finally, Sergeant Preston said, Grab him by the collar and hold on tight, Bill. I'm going to kick that door open. Got him. Kick it open, Sergeant. Right. There. King's afraid of an ambush, Sergeant. He may be laying for you in there. I'll be careful. Cover me as I go in. Right. King struggled frantically, but Constable Warren held the collar in an iron-like grip as Sergeant Preston, a six-gun in one hand and a lantern in the other, slowly entered the darkened cabin. Seconds seemed like hours to Constable Warren when Sergeant Preston neither called nor returned through the cabin door. He was about to call out when he heard the sergeant's voice. Hang on to King, Bill. He must not come in here. I'll try to, Sergeant. But hurry, I can't hold him much longer. A few seconds later, Sergeant Preston emerged into the open and closed the door behind him. Let him go now, Bill. There, there, Easy now, fella. I'm all right. Now I know why you ran up from Spike. You do? What did you find in there? I found a dead dog. A big husky? Yes, the same one. Now we've got to get King to a doctor. I don't understand. Bill, that dog died within the last two hours. I think he died of rabies. Holy smoke. He may have bitten King today, even scratched him. It's possible. King knew the dog was mad, and he let him away from me, from everyone. That's why I ran. It wasn't cowardice. Good boy, King. We'll take care of you. Oh, if King gets rabies... He won't. We get him right to a doctor. There's no doctor in Caribou. Doc Winchester lives in Pineville. That's the next camp, and it's 15 miles from here, and the weather's getting bad. Yes, I know. There's a telegraph line connecting Caribou with Pineville. Doc's got a fast dog team. I'll wire him to start at once and meet us at the cabin, which is about halfway. That'll save time. I hope he's there. He mentioned something about going to Dawson the last time I saw him. Well, I telegraphed Doc Winchester. You take a look through town for Joe Dunn and Sam Fisher. Huh? However, from the appearance of the cabin, I suspect they've gone. Now, let's move fast, Bill. Come right. on, King. I'll meet you at the telegraph office. The snow, which had started early in the evening, became brittle and dark as the temperature dropped and the stiff wind increased. By the time Joe Dunn and Sam Fisher had covered half the distance to Pineville, both were half frozen, and they considered it great luck when they found an abandoned cabin beside the trail. Soon they had a roaring fire going in the stove, and the cabin was warm and snug. The men were tired. Despite Sam's need for medical attention, both men were reluctant to give up the warm comfort and face the blizzard again that night. You know, Sam, it might be a good idea if we stayed here tonight, went to Pineville, come sun up. Yeah, I'd like to, all right, Joe, but I've got to get to a doctor. The sooner, the better. Yeah, it wouldn't be so bad if we had a dog team breaking trail for us. But bucking that snow's a tough job, especially with the wind against us. Joe, I've got to get to Pineville. Hey, listen. Dog team, coming this way, too. Blow out the candle, Joe. No, you fool. The driver of that team's already seen it. It gets suspicious. Maybe it's the Mountie. No, it's not him. This team's coming from the direction of Pineville. He's stopping the team. Yeah, he is. Now, take it easy, Sam. Here's where we get a dog team. Yeah. Yeah, I get you, Joe. Quiet now. Let me handle this. Oh, well, Sergeant. I certainly didn't expect you and the constable to beat me here. Come on on in. Oh, oh I guess I, I made a mistake. I, I was expecting to meet someone else. I thought so when you busted in like that. Who'd you say it was? Sergeant Preston and Constable Warren from Caribou. I saw the light in the window and thought they'd arrived ahead of me. I didn't see how it was possible. <laughs> you know, I've got one of the fastest dog teams in the north. I do say so myself. Oh, you have, huh? Well, ain't that nice, Joe? Hey, mister, you're all bloody. What happened to you? Tell him, Joe. Yeah. Oh! Well, Joe, looks like we fixed the stranger and got ourselves a dog team. Yeah, we got one. And if he's not talking through his hat, it's one of the best. Now we've got to get out of here quick. You heard what he said. About Preston and the constable? Somebody must have seen his head south out of town. Yeah, but I can't figure out what this guy had to do with it. Maybe he's a constable. Want to search him? No, we haven't time. Now, come on. Let's go. Light in the window, Sergeant. I see it. I knew Doc would beat us here with that dog team of his. I'm glad this is as far as we go tonight. We've had enough of this weather. Bill. Yes, Sergeant? No dog team here. Well, I'll be switched. Well, maybe Doc decided to travel on skis. Perhaps. Well, here we are. Come on, King. Bill, look on the floor. It's Doc. Yes, it's Doc, all right. Been hit on the head. Is he dead? Can't tell yet. Help me roll him over. All right. I'll loosen his spark up. All right. That's it. Meanwhile, Joe Dunn and Sam Fisher, by pushing the dog team to its utmost, reached Pineville in less than an hour. 
Making inquiry from a passing lumberjack, they learned the whereabouts of Dr. Winchester's house. Repeated knocks at the door wakened the doctor's house servant. Oh, uh, yes? We've got to see the doc. Wake him up. It's a case of life or death. Doctor, not here. What? He gone a long time. Back tomorrow, maybe. Cut out the stalling. This is serious. We've got to see him. But doctor, not here. He go to Caribou tonight. Oh, caribou? Did you say Caribou? Yes, he go to Caribou. Sergeant Pleston sent telegram. Doctor, go. Now, just a minute. Let's get this straight. Just what did Sergeant Preston want with the doc? Sergeant Preston say in telegram, Mad Dog by King. King name of Sergeant Preston's dog. Oh. Dr. Winchester take serum cured by the mad dog. Okay, you're telling the truth. So sorry, doctor, not here. Good night. That guy you slugged was the doctor, Joe. Yeah, you're right. Come on, Sam, we're heading back to that... <laughs> the Mounty Constable Warren. Doc said he was expecting to meet him at the cabin. I know that. We'll take care of them when we get there. Up, you huskies! Up! Hush! Come on! Get on! Back in the cabin on the trail, Doc Winchester had revived under first aid administered by Sergeant Preston and Constable Warren. When he had told his story, he called the great dog King to him and carefully, inch by inch, went over him, his deft fingers separating the thick coat of fur to expose the dog's skin. Finally, he patted King on the head and then looked at the officers. Why, he hasn't been touched. There's not so much as a scratch on him. Just as a precaution, don't you think he'd better be given treatment, Doc? Well, I don't think it necessary, Sergeant. But even if it were necessary, I couldn't. You what? couldn't? No, you see, the case with the serum in it was on my sled. The thugs took it when they slugged me and stole my dog team. And I might add, that's the only serum between here and Dawson. Dawson? 200 miles. Sergeant, you say you think those two fellas are the ones who want the dog to chase King out of town? No doubt of it, Doc. The description you give of them is identical. They're the same ones, all right. They must have known Sergeant Preston and King would be on their trail. Then, uh, I think one of them is for some trouble. How do you mean? You said the dog was found dead in the cabin and things were upset. That's right. The dog must have jumped the big man before he died. Oh. What makes you think so, Doc? Well, the big fellow had a cloth wrapped around one hand and blood on his parka. Then that's why the cabin was upset. They must have had a fight with the dog. The dog had been left in the cabin. It looks like a case of the irony of justice. That man will develop hydrophobia. And on the sled he stole is a serum that could have cured him. But he'll never know it. He'll die a horrible death. Joe and Sam were almost exhausted when they came within view of the lighted cabin on the trail. But they found new strength in the realization that their search for the doctor was nearly at an end. I hope them dogs don't start yapping. They won't. After the workout they've had, they'll stop in their tracks and sleep at the first opportunity. I'll give them that opportunity right now. Oh, there. Oh, you kidding? Think I'll leave them here in the traces? Yeah, come on. We'll go the rest of the way to that cabin without them. Got your gun handy? Right. We're going to have trouble when we get there, Sam. I'm geared for it. Now, careful now. Be quiet. We'd better take a look through the window first and see what the situation is. Keep your voice down. Come on, let's get closer. Look, Sam. There's Sergeant Preston in there. And there's Constable Bill Warren. The other man's the doctor. I guess that crack in the head didn't hurt him very much. He's the gent I want to see. Now listen, Joe, here's what you do. You stand right here by this window. There's no point staying here. It's not much more than an air hole. I could get through that window. You could shoot through it, but what? I'm going in through the door, Savvy. Yeah, then what? I'm holding a gun on those three and telling the doc what he's to do for me. This any sudden move by any one of them three in the room, you open fire. To kill? We're taking no chances. Shoot fast and shoot to kill. Except, of course, the doc. You hurt him before he's taken care of me, and you wish you hadn't. You do what I told you. I'm going in there. Get him up. All three of you, you're covered. Come in. We've been waiting for you. Oh, you have, huh? Well, get your hands up and quick. You too, Constable. Better put the gun down, Sam. You're under arrest. Where's your partner? He's covering you from the side. So don't try anything, see? Get your hands up and face the wall. You, Doc, take the guns. Step lively. Sam, if you were bitten by your dog... I know all about that. 
And I know Doc can fix me so I don't come down with that hydrophobia. Well, I might have been able to if you hadn't stolen my sled. The medicine I need is on it. Well, well, your sled's right outside. Now, for the last time, you two face the wall. I can't follow those instructions, Sam. You put away that gun and surrender, and you'll be given the treatment you need. Otherwise, I'm going to have to draw... Go ahead. Slap leather and see what my partner does. Very well. Take him, King! No, you... Grab his gun, Bill. My shoulder, my shoulder. I'll take that gun. Joe! Joe, get him up and fire! Your pal has all he can handle. We left King outside the house. Keep Sam covered, Bill. I'll bring in his partner. Right. Be careful of my shoulder. The doc will plug that wound when he treats you to prevent hydrophobia. Get in there, Joe. That dog... The dog jumped me. Uh, Sam, I didn't have a chance to fire. I don't even know where the animal came from. Good evening. That's the stuff, boy. Don't let him get me. Don't let him charge me again. He won't. As long as you behave like a prisoner. Uh, you can take over now, Doctor. Hurry, Doc. I'll sit down there. I'll fix you up so you'll live to pay the penalty for your crimes. Save me. <laughs> that doggone animal. If he hadn't jumped if me, If that would... dog hadn't jumped you, your pal would have died of rabies. Oh, Doc. Doc, you can give me medicine. You can fix me so I won't get rabies. Yes, I can and I shall. But if King hadn't attacked your partner, you would have killed Sergeant Preston. In that case, well, you live to go to jail, Sam. You can thank Sergeant Preston's dog that you escaped the most horrible kind of death. You did it once more, King. This case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. Say, fellas and girls, don't forget, you now get swell new model farm cutouts on packages of delicious Quaker Pup wheat and Quaker Pup rice. Yes, you get complete models of farm buildings, farm animals, and farm equipment. Build your own model farm. There are 46 different detailed scale models in all on eight different packages. You get as many as six models to a single package. Remember, these keen, new, exciting models are yours today with packages of swell-tasting Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereals shot from guns. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the black and white pup. When King and I were in the vicinity of Silver Bend... We learned that thieves had stolen money from old Louie who ran the trading post and two valuable dogs from that gray. The thieves might have gotten away if they hadn't left three puppies in the icy wilderness. When we found those puppies, things began to happen fast. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.